Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Auerbach. Good morning. I'm here to do a little bit more reviewing of the last six questions on the review guide. Uh, since we're not going to be together live today, I thought I could give this to you. So um, first question that we have to go over is, what are two ways that we see evidence for evolution in fossils? Um, well, one thing that we see in evolution having to do with fossils is just time. Um, the thing that Darwin saw uh, when he was in the Andes, when he saw fossils from sea creatures up at the top of the Andes mountains, indicating that millions of years of geological processes had happened. Um, you can also just see that the uh, fossil record, excuse me, has, oh, come on now as examples of animals that uh, in lower levels of the ground, meaning they're older, uh, have features that are similar to organisms that live today. So you can see that uh, life looked different in the past, but also similar. And you can see change through time and get a sense of common ancestry from that. Number seven is how do embryos show common ancestry between different organisms? Well, embryos are the forming organisms in utero or in eggs or wherever. Um, and embryos, let's see, is it this one? It's this one. So remember that embryos show us that we have common ancestry because we go through the same stages that our early ancestors went. Remember, a lot of evolution comes from changes in the development process of embryos. And so embryos from um, embryos from fish and embryos from the humans look more or less the same. We have the same evolutionary features. We have gill slits. We have tails. Uh, and so that is one thing that we can definitely see from embryos, uh, that no matter what we are, we can see our evolutionary history in the fact that we go through the same changes as we develop that primitive organisms did. We go through a period where we have gills. We go through a period where we have a, a tail. Uh, and at the beginning, we're, we're almost identical to fish, salamander, chickens, uh, and, and turtles. And by unfolding this process, we can see that it's something that has changed over time. But like a lot of things with evolution, it still has the beginning part built into it because you can't go back and erase the fish part of your evolutionary history, you still go through those changes before the changes that are human kick into development. All right. <clears throat> How do vestigial structures, oh, excuse me, wrong one. How uh, use our forearm and hand bone as a uh, structure, as a way of addressing how our anatomy and that of other animals demonstrates common ancestry. Well, we talked about this as, as we did with all these things, folks, by the way, don't forget, nothing replaces a good close reading of the book and uh, trying real hard to, to figure it out uh, from that material. And uh, well, anyway, I'm, it's a lecture within a lecture. Okay. Forearm and hand bones. Yes, we talked about this. Here are the forearm and hand bones of humans and several different organisms. And if you don't see common ancestry here, I don't know where you're going to see it, folks. We, we, we have the same four uh, four limb structure as all of these other organisms because we all evolved from a common ancestor, which was Tiktaalik, the, the first organism to step out of the water onto land uh, in its fins it had a structure that was very much like that and so over time it's changed in different directions in the bat it's changed into something that could assist with flying uh, in the penguin it just sort of modified down to a flipper uh, and and uh, obviously in, in humans we've, we've really modified it so that we can uh, grab things and uh, and do great things 
And well, so that's common ancestry as seen in the uh, the same bone structure uh, across the animal, the higher animal kingdom uh, for four limbs. And that shows common ancestry. Okay, vestigial structures are another thing that we studied uh, from 10.4, evidence for evolution. And a vestige is a trace of something that's left over just a little bit. And what we saw as far as vestigial structures were uh, whale pelvises. We saw a few things, and we have our own appendix, which is left over from when we used to use it. Um, and we have a bit of a tailbone left from when uh, our primate ancestors had tails. Uh, and the whale has a leftover pelvis from when it used to be a land walking animal. And so it's a vestige because the, the trait itself isn't selected for anymore. Once, once whales were in the water full time, they didn't need legs. And so as organisms were born by mutation without legs or with smaller legs or shrinky legs, uh, those, those organisms survived just fine. And in fact, probably better because they didn't have legs dragging through the water that maybe a, a shark could bite or who knows what could happen. One more thing to bang on something and, and get injured. And, and so it was, better to survive without the legs than with. And so slowly they, they shrank away until there wasn't even barely any evidence of them left, except for a couple of disconnected bones inside the body that since they don't hurt anything, they just, they just form and they form in every whale's body, uh, just like our appendix forms in ours, even though we don't need it anymore. So it's a vestige, but it shows, uh, that many years ago we had, had a, a different form and that over time we have changed. Okay. And then these last ones, you know, be prepared to apply the model of evolution by natural selection to the evolution of antibiotic resistance in Staphylococcus aureus or the evolution of different coloration in peppered moths in industrial Britain. Um, we studied this with HIV. So if you have no other option, unless you, I mean, I would just do some research on this and you can find it, but really it's just natural selection folks. Again, it's these steps, um, uh, overproduction, variation, adaptation, descent with modification with Staphylococcus, uh, the, um, we can include antibiotics. If you're a bacteria, antibiotics are a strong selective pressure, meaning like 99.9% .9 of organisms are going to get killed by that first couple days of antibiotics. Who survives? Well, some individual that has some variation, something inside of them that helps them not get killed by that antibiotic. So you have overproduction, somebody's going to die, uh, too many, too many uh, staff to survive the antibiotics and they all have little variations based on DNA mistakes, just like we do, just like any living thing. And if one of those variations gives an advantage that helps it survive, uh, like a, a different cell wall or some sort of different biochemistry, uh, then that becomes an adaptation. So that variation becomes an adaptation if it helps you survive and reproduce more. And if you can survive that antibiotic, you're the only one that gets to reproduce. And so then uh, that leads to the descent with modification or inheritance part, which is that the survivors are the ones that reproduce. If 99.9% .9 of the bacteria die from the antibiotic, then it's that 0.1% that is going to reproduce and make the next 100% of the population. They will all have that trait. So that's descent with modification. As the generations go on, that trait spreads. Okay, so that's that's uh, antibiotic resistance. And uh, what was the other one? I spaced it already. Um, the peppered moths. We we talked about this. You 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 can look that up again. Peppered moths. You we 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 talked through this one time, and uh, you can go look it up again. Uh, as far as what the causes and effects were. All right, folks, um, really the, the best thing for you to do for this is to go back through and just read 10.3, 10.4 again, 
That's, that's honestly what I would do. Go through, make sure that you recognize all these words. Look at the study questions. Get ready for the test, folks. Um, I'll be putting questions out for you uh, this afternoon. And then I will probably throw you a couple multiple choice or uh, some stuff like that on Friday. Quick quiz, 10 questions. Um, all right, folks, um, have a very good day and I will see you in class tomorrow. Goodbye.